Hello there, everybody. I am Captain Jim Palmer, the Dream Business Coach. I'm the founder of the Dream Business Mastermind and Coaching Program, creator of Dream Business Academy, founder of No Hassle Newsletters, which is my extraordinary done-for-you newsletter program that we have had the pleasure of serving over 1,200 small business owners in nine countries, which astounds me to this day. But most importantly today, I'm the host of Dream Business Radio, now in its 10th year. This is episode 525, and what a special one it is, a fantastic Live edition with a great guest, Javon Wooden. Javon, how you doing today? I am doing fantastic, Jim. I've been excited. I've been waiting for this. So thanks for having me, man. My pleasure. And I'll tell everybody, you're just moving into your house. So it's not like you don't have curtains or anything. You're literally, <laughs> you're literally got the boxes all around you. So Absolutely. Uh, you know how oh that goes goodness. when you first move in. You're just, you're just trying to find I know, to... <laughs> and I think we're going to be doing it again. But anyway, hey, folks, this episode of Dream Business Radio is brought to you by the Dream Business Mastermind and Coaching Program. If you're an entrepreneur or small business owner who's tired of slow to no growth, if you're uh, feeling overwhelmed, unfocused, and especially, and I always say, especially if you'd like to learn how to create multiple streams of revenue in your business, something I'm very good at, then you want to check out the Dream Business Mastermind, which is led by me, Captain Jim, at dreambizcoaching.com, dreambizcoaching.com. Let me tell you a little bit about Javon, and we will dive right in. I've been so excited for this. Um, my interview is usually scheduled a month out and I, I meet somebody like Javon a month ago. I'm like, damn, I wish it was tomorrow, but it's finally here. <laughs> kind of like Christmas, I guess. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Thanks, Javon Wooden is an army veteran. He's a certified mindset and perception coach, author, speaker, and he's the founder of Live Not Loathe. Got to ask him about that. I love that. His military career includes leading soldiers on two deployments to Kuwait, supporting strategic and tactical missions as an information technology manager and setting up the 34th Combat Aviation Brigade's critical, it's a lot, communications to support battlefield operations with zero downtime on a 24-7 operation. Javon, very so impressed with this, has won the Bronze Star for heroic acts during his deployment in Afghanistan. Javon has overcome adversity, depression, and PTSD to earn multiple certifications recognized throughout the coaching community, as well as an MBA from the University of Maryland's Robert H. Smith Business School and an MS in cybersecurity, such an underachiever, Javon. <laughs> and his mission is to empower others to increase their self-confidence, improve their self-perception, and design a life they don't need a vacation from. You might have taken that from me. No, <laughs> we all have that same, same mission. So, Javon, once again, welcome to Dream Business Radio, man. Hey, thanks so much, Jim. Thanks for the introduction. As I said, I am honored to be here, and I'm ready to add some value to the listeners, man. Well, that's what it's all about. It's why we do this, right? So first of all, on behalf of me, my team, the thousands of people who are listening to Dream Business Radio, thank you for your service. I've, I've, I've interviewed a lot of veterans. I don't think I've ever interviewed somebody with your impressive track record. So first of all, thank you for that. And, um, you know, I'm excited to talk a lot of business stuff because what you're doing now, fellow coach, focus a lot on mindset and things like that. But uh, right. my loyal listeners always enjoy a little bit of the backstory, like what got you from, you know, to where you are today. And, and you do have quite a backstory. Um, so share a little bit about that and, you know, kind of what happened in the teen years and then what what actually got you into the service, if you would. Absolutely, Jim. Um, well, first off, thanks to you for the support uh, with the military um, career. I couldn't do it without you. Uh, but yeah. this started really, I mentioned adversity in the bio. Right. And I thought that was very pointed to mention because it all started there. It started with me overcoming my own limiting beliefs. At the age of 17, I faced seven years in prison. Uh, by the grace of God, I didn't have to do that time. And I truly believe that God really put me in that prison cell as I sat and waited for my fate to be decided by the system uh, to just clear me out and tell me, like, this is not your path, man. Listen, you yeah. have resources. You just have to figure out how to use them. And my resources wasn't money. Uh, at that time, I thought money was the only value that we had. And because I didn't have any, we were poor. I was like, OK, I'm valueless. But sitting in that cell, when my mother came to visit me, she said something that was profound to me. She mentioned that she had put up the house for me to get a lawyer. And oh. that gave me the perception that, OK, I do mean something. So when I went up there and I just prayed for the first time and by the grace of God, after that visit, two weeks later, I was out. I graduated high school. 
went to college, couldn't afford college, but I said, I'm not going back that way. So I joined the military at the age of 22. Uh, and the military was my second turning point, I like to call it, because that really showed me the leadership, you know, putting me in those types of roles, as you heard in the bio, showed me about leadership, told, showed me about collaboration, the importance of actively listening uh, and the importance of organization, prioritization, and really all the things that really matter being an entrepreneur, right? Not giving up that resilience, that problem solving. So the military really told me a lot about what it is to be uh, what I am now, which is the founder of Live Not Loathe, being a business coach and mindset coach. It's, it's so awesome. And, um, you know, I learned from my whole deal with cancer 21 years ago and 18 months of unemployment, and everything. Um, God does use what, what I've learned to call it a season of crises to bring you to your knees. Where, and that's kind of what happened. That's that revelation, I guess, you had in the jail cell. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. I, and and that's like you said, we all have that that season. Right. We're like, why mm -hmm. is this happening? And we're looking for the reason or rationale. Um, and a lot of times I say there's there's two things when it comes to when we can't find it immediately. Right. It hasn't shown itself yet. He's preparing you for something better or your lesson that you're learning is meant to be shared. Uh, so that's why I feel it's so, uh, so important for us, you know, myself, you and others to share our stories because they help so many people that we don't even know. Um, so yeah. that's that's really where the, the coaching and the speaking and, and writing a book came from. And it, you know what? It's interesting you say that to share because I, up until I, I had diagnosed with melanoma, I spent about almost a month where I didn't know if my chance of being alive in five years was 80 percent or 50 percent. So mm. you, you really you get to learn very quickly what's important. Like my I have four kids, my twin girls were 13th time. I didn't know if I'd see them graduate high school. So it's like, wow, I thought I had ah, another 40 or 50 years at that point. But um but as far as the sharing, you're right. I mean, I, I shared because I never heard the term melanoma before. You know, you have skin cancer, but melanoma, I shared it with everybody, including my cousins, which I don't see that often. And two mm -hmm. of my cousins went in to have something checked and it turned out to be melanoma. Are you <laughs> serious? Laughing. But yeah. And it's and they said, oh, my gosh, Jim, because of what you share with me, I had something on my leg and I checked it out. It was melanoma early stage. So everything's good. But wow. I do think, you know, and, and as a fellow coach. Um, you know, I tell, I've helped a lot of people, you know, get into coaching. And what I tell them is it's your, your skill, your talent, your experience, that's going to help you be a coach. But what makes you a great coach is the experiences that you've had that you bring to the table. So, you know, I had bad money mindset, you know, all these fears and phobias. Talk about that. When I talk about that, in addition to the marketing and branding and things, that's kind of the whole package. And I think that's why you that's why we all go through stuff. I mean, we all hear that you you grow, you learn and grow so much more from adversity than just waking up to sunshine and rainbows every day. Absolutely. And and what you just said was important. You you talked about, you know, so much more than the marketing, branding and all these other things. Well, I found that a lot of business owners aren't reaching their full potential because they're hiding from their past. Right. Which is why I put mine all out there, because that is really a part of your brand. Uh, you know, if you're not being your authentic self, then what separates you from everyone else who's a business owner in your industry? Uh, really? Yeah, it's, it's hard to it's hard to present that if you're not tearing your story, because the first part, uh, the first thing we run is our life. Right. You're the CEO of your life first before you ever become a business owner. Um, so we have to kind of intertwine those two, especially when you're a personal brand, a coach, a consultant, a speaker, so on and so forth. So that becomes a part of your marketing, a part of your branding, a part of the, the brand story, so to speak. Um, and it all ties into overcoming that yourself, saying, OK, people are going to judge me because of X. Well, we've seen time and time again that when you <laughs> when you leverage your story and you're the one talking about it, right? It takes away that power to anyone who wanted to find it, right? That mm -hmm. wanted to say, "Oh man, this person is imperfect." We're all humans, right? So, so I I'm really one that leans into my story and, and what I face because that's what got me here, right? If I if I it's hide so all of that stuff, I wouldn't be authentic. Yeah. So it's probably no surprise, although it's probably a surprise to some that watch me do these interviews, think I don't prepare at all, but I really prepare quite heavily. I've got so many questions I want to ask you, but I can already tell it's going to be an amazing half hour just because I haven't asked you a single question just from our conversation. <laughs> but, you know, it's interesting, as you said, when we share uh, our experiences and our, our, our the good, the bad, and the ugly, as they say, 
But a lot of people struggle with that. They think, no, I've got to, if I'm going to be in business and I'm going to have this, whether it's a personality, whatever it is, they think you've got to don't, don't talk about the bad stuff. Right. Right. Where do, where do you, so I'm sure you've helped people. Well, first of all, were you always comfortable sharing your backstory? Cause it's, I mean, it's amazing, but did you at some point think I better just keep that, you know, in the back room or, or was that a revelation for you? For me, it was a revelation because, you know, I was, I've always been transparent um, about where I've come from and, and how I came up. But mm -hmm. when it came to, when I first wrote my bio, uh, that was actually the thing that le I led with was everything that I've gone through. Because when I initially started Live Not Load, it was to help others who faced some adversity who weren't confident enough to step out into their purpose. Um, so for me, it was just an easy decision to do that. Now for wow. others, I can understand why it's hard, right? They're like, hey, I'm yeah. trying to start this brand. I'm, I'm looking to get into this industry. No one's going to work with me if I have a record or I got in trouble um, and all these different things. But for me, it was like, hey, I'm giving other people agency to say, you know what, if they don't want to work with me because of my past and, and judging me from that, maybe they aren't who I wanted to work with from the jump. Right? That's because true. we've seen plenty of people who face uh, some type of adversity, even people who've done time and come out and be very successful. We see plenty of people these days who end up getting in trouble, no matter if they're twenties or their sixties, right? They get a DUI or they run into some type of adversity. And we're talking about big time executives, right? Yeah. But we have to understand that these are things that happen to everyone in their, their life. You know, it may not be that type of adversity, but they can relate in some shape or form. Right. Maybe they were divorced, which a lot of people don't want to talk about. So you yeah. just have to find what your 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 mess is and own up to it. So I was looking on your um, on your YouTube channel, actually, you got quite a lot of videos. So that's that's kind of cool. Um, so the message up at the top was helping people improve their self-esteem and increase confidence without feeling judgment or guilt. I mean, that's kind of right. what we're talking about now. Right. Absolutely. I think that's important. Um, I want when someone comes to speak with me, I want them to understand that I'm not coming from a place of feeling better, better than them. I'm actually coming from a place of compassion where I want to understand and empathy. Uh, and I think that a lot of what we go through should be used in order to share that empathy because sympathy is different. Sympathy, you can't put yourself in that person's shoes. You you don't look to really understand. So uh, I, I believe that that actually gives me a leg up that I lean into to what I've gone through myself, um, including the PTSD and depression. Uh, so yeah, yeah that, that that without judgment or guilt is very important in everything that I do. So so you formed this company, a uh, coaching program, coaching program company called Live Not Loathe. How did you come up with that? I mean, it's kind of a cool name. What was that? What's behind that? <laughs> well, thanks, Jim. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, so what is well, behind hey, the name? Before, before you answer, I have to interrupt you because um, oh, no you said when you lead with your backstory. Now, I, I want to share this with you. I, I've shared it with you. I want to share it with the audience. When when my show, Dream Business Radio, got featured on that podcast service, I got 160 people apply to be on the show. So I'm scanning down 160 names and just very, very quickly reading. And it was Live Not Low that kind of stopped my eye. And then I quickly scanned. I saw I saw about your past. I saw that you were a veteran, which goes right to the top of my book. And then what you're doing <laughs> now. That's why I reached out. So I'm wondering if you had a more sanitized version of that, we probably wouldn't even be talking today. So it works. Absolutely, Jim. And thank you for, I, I got to thank you again for, for even um, bringing me on, man, because I, I can feel the energy and I love uh, just the synergy we have just on this conversation is, is amazing. Absolutely. And, that, and that's what I'm talking about right there, right? What separates you? What separates you is being you, right? No one can do this life like you can. You're unique. You're one of one. So just lean into it, whatever that looks okay. like for you. Live not low. I, I interrupted you. What's how? No where'd that name come from? So it comes into that, right? It comes in, it represents the transformation. So loathing, I used to loathe life when I was that 17 year old kid in my, mm. my, my twenties, right? I loathe life. I didn't like what I was doing. I didn't like my circumstances. I just hated getting up. I dreaded the, the mundane stuff. I dreaded living check to check. So loathing, right? You just do not like it. You actually hate it, right? Whatever word you want to use. Um, and then transforming that to actually realizing you have agency over your life. You have things that you can control, right? And then understanding that your situation is 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 temporary, and it's really up to you to take some action. Uh, so that live part is not just 
going through the motions. It's about being alive. It's about doing things you want to do, being honest, being authentic, not doing what everyone else wants you to do. But what do you want to do? What's life mm. to you? What is that life you don't need a vacation from me to you? So do you work with um, small business owners, CEOs? I mean, everything in between, like what's the sweet spot Absolutely. for who? Okay. Yep. So, so entrepreneurs, I've done execs. So I work with pretty much decision makers, right? Okay. So it could be mid-level managers up to the execs and owners um, is, is that's my sweet spot. Very interesting. Um, and I, I like how you phrase that because, um, you know, we're taught to niche down as marketers, right? Mm -hmm. And so entrepreneurs, small business owners up to executives, it, it's a wide path. But you, you, I work with decision makers. Now, who's decision not a decision makers. maker? So once again, I applaud your, your branding there. Um, Thank you. Now, I, in the bio, I, I read, you know, that uh, you got an MBA from the University of Maryland, up my, my old stomping ground when we we're when we were living on that boat. And um, I love it. I know. Oh God, I miss it so much, Javon. <laughs> well, don't get me going. I'll, <laughs> so, um, but an MBA from the University of Maryland and. What's interesting to me is, and I've learned a lot about being an entrepreneur from mentors like Dan Kennedy and, and some others, and um, it's a very different world from that of being an executive or in a corporation. In other words, when you have a position within a company, not the owner, right? Absolutely. So how, how did the training that you received you know, to get your MBA, how does that help you? Or, and have you noticed things that you maybe aren't helpful? Just curious as you work with entrepreneurs. Absolutely. And I, I like to tell people that an MBA does not prepare you for one in running a company or a business. Right. An MBA is more like the theoretical. It gives you a foundation, but it's, you know, an uh, uh, inch deep and a mile wide. Uh, so it just gives you the foundation. You know what you're looking for. So it gives you that research back backing. Um, you have some case studies you can go on, so on and so forth. But really playing in, getting that on the job training, uh, that's where it came in, came in uh, for me. It's like, OK, I know about the customer journey, but how does it apply to my business? Um, yeah. So it just gives me that that foundational thing where I understand the business language, understand uh, P&Ls. I understand what a business is, but putting it all together, there's nothing like actually having to do it yourself, especially when you're building something from ground up. Yeah, that's when you find out the name, fancy name on your business card doesn't mean anything if you can't make it rain. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, you can have I mean, all the branding and all that stuff you want, man. But if you're not bringing in the revenue, then it doesn't matter. Javon, I ran a national franchise and then I spent two years as a VP of marketing for a training company. And then I became an entrepreneur after my season of crises. But I went from having support staff and people doing things, you know, all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, I set up my office, got, I bought a nice desk and a chair and I got my business cards. I go, well, crap, there's no money coming. I guess I better go out and sell something. <laughs> right. You have, to, you have to learn to sell real quick. You know, people I say, know. I don't like selling. I'm like, well, you must not like living a good life because you're That's selling right. whether you know it or not. Right. Yeah. There's a, and there's a lot of people who, who help people overcome the thought of selling. So anyway, we could probably talk for an hour, but I got to stay somewhat focused here. So look, don't look like a complete amateur. How do you help people get rid of bad habits? You know, when I look, when I looked over some of the videos you did and some information on your website, you know, quite, quite contrary to the look, I'm very astute when it comes to interviewing and working with people like you. And I realize that a lot of things that you talk about and that has to do with your background. And it, it's the, what I call the sweet spot of where you help people. And I'm thinking how to get rid of bad habits. That is di probably directly tied to his past. And I'm sure you learned a thing or two, you know, with, with, with your time in the military, because there's, you know, Absolutely. that is precision. So at speaking on an entrepreneurial level, because that's that's mostly who listens to this show, not so much C-suite execs, but entrepreneurs, small business owners, I'm sure we all have bad habits. So talk a little bit about <laughs> how you help people. <laughs> Don't you know my questions are like five minutes long. It's no wonder the yeah. show. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. So, okay. um, so there's a there's a few things to um, getting rid of bad habits. A lot of us don't even realize we actually have bad habits. So it's really the awareness at first. Then once you realize it, you, you come up with a plan like, okay, let me acknowledge that this is on me. Jocko Willing has this principle of extreme ownership. And I always like to say, what part do you play? And then are you 
creating your life or business? Are you making it flow with your success or are you fighting against it? So I look at your process flows. What are you doing when you wake up? What are you doing when you go to sleep, when you break? You know, are you checking mm -hmm. your phone 50 million times? So we really look at your process flow to see like where you can go ahead and increase your efficiencies. And then I want to know why, like, why does it matter for you to, to increase this? What, how is it impacting your life? Because if you're able to vocalize that and see it for yourself, then you realize what you're missing out on with those bad habits. Um, and there's six phases of change, right? So also level setting is say, you're not going to change overnight, right? It's going to take some, some real intentionality behind it. And then mm -hmm. also you may have to realize you, you may regress. So don't beat yourself up. Just figure out what you can do to, to address that next. So um, journaling is always a big thing and you don't necessarily have to write. It could be vocal. It could be whatever you want to do, but some way to keep record of what that bad habit is. Is it happening? Is it a pattern? Like, do you get nervous and you start to do something bad? That's regression. Or is it just an everyday thing? You just subconscious, right? So realizing how it shows up and manifests and then realizing like what is causing in your life, because if you can put a number to it um, and you can really make it something that's not abstract anymore, but it's actually tangible. Now, you know, you can do something about it. So it's really uh, per person. Yeah. So Javon, I'm just curious. So very unscientific, but with all the people that you coach and work with, how mm -hmm. many people come to you and say, yeah, I've got some bad habits. I need help getting out of them. Or do they start working with you on some other level and you go, man, you got to get rid of that bad habit. How many people realize it? And then how many people benefit from your coaching? Oh, oh, it's definitely the latter, right? Most people, okay. like I was saying, they don't realize they have bad habits. But as I'm assessing their business or their life, whatever it is that they, they're coming to me for, I can see that, right? I'm like, okay, you procrastinate. They're like, I procrastinate? And I'm like, yes, you're procrastinating. You're making an excuse for why you can't do it. And then they're like, no, it's, it's real, you know, for example. But things like that, people rationalize their bad habits which is why they don't change it. And it becomes a habit in the first place. Mm. So that's really how it works. Very interesting. Yeah, that's true. You can, you can rationalize anything. I mean, mm -hmm. who in the world at, at, you know, 60 needs to buy a boat like that when you're <laughs> getting close to, I mean, oh, but it's going to be great. And people that buy private planes or fly private, you can rationalize anything. That's, I mean, anything. that's actually part of sales is helping people <laughs> rationalize what it is that they want. That's great. Um, <laughs> what so you work with a lot of high achievers have you noticed what are some of the similarities that you've noticed it, it'd probably be a good book for you someday but for now what are some of the similarities you've noticed among high achievers absolutely well one of the things is you know people on the outside think they have it all together but mm -hmm. inside they are all over the place because high achievers typically put so much pressure on themselves to perform and then a lot of high achievers actually struggle with delegation because they're like, oh, they're not going to do it as well as I will. Um, so they, and when they do delegate, they may micromanage or be be worried about those things. Um, and then high achievers, they typically, you know, a lot of them are not actually good with time management, right? They can manage on the level of performance, but when it comes to life, they just they don't have time for their life, right? They're overwhelmed, overburdened, and stressed out of their minds. Um, and that's been common, but it's the reason why it's that way is because a lot of them don't want to talk about what's going on, right? They just try to hold it. They're like, I got this. I can do this until that burnout yeah. comes. That really is. I mean, um, you know, being an entrepreneur, I mean, I, I don't think anybody's who's an entrepreneur is not a type A, right? I mean, I don't know how that would work. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. That's driving, how do you do that? <laughs> unless you're driving in charge. And then, you know, this, this thing takes over. Um I've helped somebody start a business was supposed to be like a part-time thing and the entrepreneurial bug bit them bad and boom. Okay. Look, you got me to 50,000. I want to get to a hundred. Then, then this person said to me, all right, I've grossed a hundred. Now I want to net a hundred. I mean, you just keep going and going and going. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that can, that can lead to overwhelm. So how do you, how do you help people who are in overwhelm ground themselves? Or do you, I mean, do you pull anybody back? Like, let's just go with that. How do you help people ground themselves who do find themselves in a state of overwhelm? 
So, so there are a number of ways, right? So one is the forecasting. We talk about business forecasting, right? Three years out, what do you want it to look like, right? All right. And then what do you need to do to get there, right? To, to set that, that level of realism, right? Because a lot of us are doing things that we've never done before. So we're like, oh, I want to make $68, $68 million. You haven't even hit a, a, a hundred thousand yet, right? So just level setting with them and then understanding why it's important to them. Uh, and then how they're going to get there. What do you need to give up and what do you need to do uh, in order to hit that? Do you have the resources available right now or do you need to reach out? Should you be building in time to ramp up your, your for a ramp up period? So right. So when they see all of that, then they're like, OK, maybe let me let me tailor it down. And then do you want to live life like <laughs> Are you willing to just work 16 hours a day, seven days a week, no vacations to get that? Right. Because if you're not, then that alone is going to help you be like, all right, let me pull back a little bit because I don't mm -hmm. want to lose my wife. I don't want to lose my spouse or my kids because I'm doing this. Right. So you just have to really look at it from a holistic perspective. And then I do the five whys. It's like, why does it matter to you? And I want to ask you that five times, usually around the third one. You you really identify what's really the, start peeling the, the onion back a little bit, thing. right? Yeah. Peel it back. It's interesting, um, you know. So I know at the very beginning I shared. Uh, well, I was reading your your information about creating a life you don't need a vacation from, which is kind of what I do as well. And um, so about six six years ago, well, it's actually seven years ago now, I went from my five day a week schedule to three days. I, I coach and do my work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It worked, came in really handy because then Stephanie and I would be able to travel like Friday through Monday. Then we pull into a marina and I would get with Wi-Fi and do my work for three days. And one of the things that we realized is, well, first of all, you know, again, when I was 41, I had that crisis. It's like life is short. I mean, do we work to some mythical age where you say, okay, now it's safe. Now I can go have fun or now I can do this. You know, right. we made a decision, which is is actually, you know, um, was a little out there, I think, sell the house, sell the cars, put your stuff away and go live on a boat. But, you know, one thing we realized, Stephanie and I, is that, you know, we didn't want to have regrets at the end. We wanted mm -hmm. to figure out a way, how do we have this lifestyle now? And how do I tailor my business to be able to support that? And so live the life that you want to have now instead of work, 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 work. And then all of a sudden, boom, you're fa you face plant your desk, right? Absolutely. I think there's a question uh, in there somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, well, I think the uh, what you what you uh, ended off with about you know what do you want your legacy to be, right? Because yes. it can't all be about money. It's about what the money gets you, right? Because a lot of people are like, hey, I want to be a multimillionaire, and then when you ask them what they want, their lifestyle is not even near that amount, right? Uh, so it's it's really about are you living someone else's dream or are you living yours? Um, and that's so, what it boils down to for a lot of people. Yeah. So, Javon, we're at 327. Can you go like five or six more minutes? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I always forget to ask my guests if you're on a hard stop at the bottom of the hour until I get them on the <laughs> get them on the show. And if you had to go, I would I would wrap up in three minutes and look like a pro. But I love the conversation we're having. I know you published a book last year, Own Your Kingdom, How to Control Your Mindset So You Can Control Your Destiny. Again, a great title. Um, Thank you. Tell me about the book and why people should get it. Absolutely. So the book, a lot of people thought my first book would be my life. It's not. It's really the lessons I learned from life. Um, so the book covers everything we're talking about today, getting in that, that that proper mindset, going from that scarcity or that place of lack to that abundance and growth mindset. Um, and a lot of it starts with forgiving yourself. Right. Um, we, we end up and we do things that we may not have been so proud of. Or you talked about living with regrets, you know, facing that and saying, OK, I can't change something. So let me start from here. Start from the present. Um, and it's, it, we talked about the 360 security system in there or support system. I mean, where you have to have people around you that are going to uplift you, hold you accountable, inspire you, educate you and just make you want to be the best version of yourself. Uh, there's really a lot in there. And the reason why you want to get that is to hit that next gear, right? Shift to the, yeah. the mindset where you're like, hey, I'm not playing. This is my baseline. Where I'm at now is the baseline. I'm trying to level up there as much as I can because I'm owned. Abundance is my birthright. So, and I'm going to go get everything that I want in life, right? You shouldn't feel bad about wanting more, right? We're, right. we're destined for that, right? Because when you have more, you can serve more. 
I know one of the chapters in the book um, is how to forgive yourself so you can move forward. This is why right. I knew we'd get along great because one of the chapters in my sixth book, Just Say Yes, was um, the two F words in business, which is fear and forgiveness. Because mm -hmm. for 13 years I've been coaching, one of the things I realized is that people hang on to either regret, oh, I wish I had done this earlier, or re regret like I should be doing more or whatever, or bad decisions they made. I've had people say, well, I'd like to work with you, but I've had three bad coaching experiences. And so they, you know, you hold on to this regret and it prevents you from moving forward. You have to forgive yourself right. for things that go wrong. Otherwise, it's like nautical language. It's like trying to get up on plane, dragging an anchor off the back of the boat. Regre regret and, and, and the inability to forgive yourself is huge. So t talk just for a minute about that. Yeah, I actually talk about the the holding on to anchors as well. So yeah, we definitely get along. Um, yeah, well, like you just said, like when you're holding on to forgiveness, you know, forgiveness is for you. A lot of people are like, if I forgive them, you know, what whoever it was, or if, even if it's yourself, then you know, I'm saying it's okay. And it's not the case. It's really just relinquishing the power that whatever it is holds on you. Right? You can't take that power back if you never say, you know what, I'm no longer living in that period or whenever that thing happened. You're now moving forward. And that's really what it's right. about. It's about allowing yourself to come into the present and not stay in the past. Very cool. OK, two two questions. Otherwise, I'll, I, I'd keep going. But um, how is impo how important is it, um, Javon, for entrepreneurs to take risk? I mean, starting a business is risky. It's far less risky today than right. it was 20 years or 30 years ago. I mean, when I published my first book, just as an example, this was before print on demand. I had to order 3000 books. I had no idea if I'd sell two. Right. And so but today it's print on demand, just like mm -hmm. you can set up a business and a website for almost no money and you're in business. But the kind of risk is that's necessary to get to get to your first six figures or go from six figures to 250 and then 500, 750, a million. It's all about risks. Talk about that, if you would. Uh, risk, risk are necessary. Calculated risks are necessary, right? Um, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that, uh, you know, like you said, op entrepreneurship is a risk as a whole, right? You're you're mm -hmm. facing, you know, economic downturns or or changes in the market, etc. But when you when you really do your work and you do your homework as an entrepreneur, it's it's really not no any different than having a job, right? It's actually better because you're the one controlling it, if you, especially if you're a solopreneur, right? It's really your effort, it should be based on your effort, right? If you put in the effort, right, of course, it's going to take some time to ramp it up. But once you lay that groundwork and that foundation, it, it, it typically just starts rolling, right? And that's really where the risk is quelled, as you talked about. Uh, yeah. And that's why I say, like, entrepreneurship is a, is a risk, but it's, the reward outweighs that tremendously for me. Absolutely. Um, so last question. So I'm going to spin back to marketing, which is my usual topic. So I saw you're featured on entrepreneur.com. You're on fast, you're in fast company. Like I think you're on some board there, which is, and some other places. How did you do that? Like, first of all, and how has that helped you, you know, get exposure for your business? Absolutely. So it's, it's, it's helped a lot, right? Of course, there's, that's millions of eyes on it. Um, so the, the Fast Company, I actually knew someone, someone I used to work for was on that, that Fast Company board. And I just asked them like, hey, could you put in a word for me? Um, and then that that's what worked. I um, mean, you have to have like certain um, criteria you hit in your business, like yeah. 25 sp paid speaking engagements or make a certain amount of your business, et cetera. And then entrepreneur, quite frankly, is just a, it's a council. That's a pay to play to be quite frankly. But if, again, you have to, your business has to um, hit a certain threshold or criteria. And then the board is the national speakers association, uh, Houston chapter. Uh, they okay. just, they needed help with marketing. And I said, heck yeah. Right. Because I'm a, you know, I'm a speaker as well. And national it's, it's just near and dear to my heart what the mission is for that. Um, so just, so you know, what's great about board. what's great about your answer. I want to point this out in case people missed it. So first of all, Javon just demonstrated what he talked about earlier is, is being your authentic self, just sharing the real story, the true story. Right. Cause I, I set him up for a very nice question. He could have said, well, Jim, I am brilliant. I write great articles. They came <laughs> after me. <laughs> Right. And he put it nope. out there. Well, I asked, I took the shot. Right, and I mean, right. I think the real lesson here that I don't want people to miss is you have to take the shot. I was very blessed and I, I can't see it behind me. I'll turn where is it? Oh, stop waiting. That was my fifth book. Stop waiting for it to get easier. 
And at this point, I really wanted to go after kind of a big name. I wanted to have like a marquee name to write the forward. And um, I, I'm I'm about three quarters done writing the book. And I remember exactly where I was. I was down at a friend's house at the beach. I was just taking an hour to write a little bit more. And I was listening to, a, um, I think, a podcast. And I heard Kevin Harrington, which was one of the original mm. sharks on Shark Tank. And so what happened is Kevin, and I didn't know if it was a slip or what, but it was in my listening ear, kind of half listening. I go, what did he just say? So he goes, at the usual end of an interview, which I'm going to do for you now, is, is how do people get in touch with you? And he said, well, you can go to kevinherring.com. And if anybody wants to email me, he gave an AOL email address. I'm like, my first thought is, who the hell still is AOL? But that must be like a personal email, <laughs> right? And I, I, my hand to God, I jumped on my computer and blah, 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 Kev, whatever it was at AOL. Hey, my name's Jim Palmer. Love you on Shark Tank. And by the way, I, I, I mentioned one of the things he bought into, which I think was uh, City Kitty or one of those things. So I mentioned not just, hey, I love Shark Tank. I showed him. And um, I said, I'm writing a book for entrepreneurs. I gave him a, like a two or three. And I said, and I didn't ask him to write the forward. I said, would you consider writing the forward? And um, and I think I attached. No, I didn't do it. So then I, I sent that. In an hour, he wrote back and said, send me the manuscript. It was very short. but so, so I sent him the manuscript. And the next day he said, I like what you're doing here. I completely agree with your thoughts. Blah, 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 blah. I'd be happy to write it. And I'm like, holy mother. And That's so it. Kevin Harrington. So, but I took the shot. And I'm not saying, well, how brave I was because I was like typing like this, a little nervous because I'm approaching Kevin Harrington. But you took the shot. Javon, I could go on all friggin' day. I love the interview. I, I love your backstory. I love what you've done with your life. I love how you're helping people. I'm sure people want to connect with you. Um, so what would be a good place for them to do that? Sure. And don't Live give an, don't give an AOL address. Do not give an AOL address. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen AOL in forever. That's why I was laughing. I'm like, wow. Um, so uh, Live Not Loathe, that's L-I-V-E. N-O-T-L-O-A-T-H-E. And you can find me on all platforms on that. And then uh, livenotloathe.com is the website. Uh, so, and, and if you, on uh, LinkedIn, just search my name, Jeff. LinkedIn. And go. then on YouTube, I, 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 is the name of your channel your name or is it Live Not I think it's, it's Live. It's Live Not Loathe. Yep. Live yeah. Not so loathe. go there, folks. He's got some really great videos. Um, he doesn't jump off a dock like like I do, but he gives you some really, <laughs> really good information. <laughs> anyway, Thanks. Javon, thank you so much, my friend. It was such a pleasure to connect with you. Thanks, Jim. It's a pleasure being here. And thank you to all the listeners. Hey, folks, that wraps up this very special interview with my guest, Javon Wooden. I highly recommend you connect with him in all the places we just talked about. Learn from him. He's got a good heart and he, he just loves to serve. And um, anyway, it'll 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 bless you to connect with him. So please do that. You can connect with me at GetJimPalmer.com. That's my home base, GetJimPalmer.com. Again, if you're interested in joining me and about 28 other smart entrepreneurs in the Dream Business Mastermind, that would be a very good decision on your part. You go to DreamBizCoaching.com, DreamBizCoaching.com. Jamal, excuse me, Javon mentioned just a few minutes ago about legacy. Yep, so I'm getting a little gray here. So I'm looking at my legacy a little bit in the rearview mirror and um what I did about a year ago now is I made the digital versions of all six of my books free. There's my hands and I can hear myself. <laughs> I made the digital versions of my books for free. So at Amazon, obviously they're Kindle, Barnes and Noble are Nook books, and they're also in the iBook store, all six for free. It's my kind of my gift to you. Hey, uh, Javon, I just want to let you know that um, it's, it's hard for me to know exactly, but I can track somewhat on Amazon. Over 35,000 books have been downloaded for free, which is kind of cool. Wow. Keep keeping the uh, keeping the education out there, but that's the legacy part. Anyway, folks, that is it. I hope you um, please take a moment. And I'm sure a lot of people usually watch this on replay. Thank thank uh, Javon for his service. Thanks for a great interview. And um, and uh, until this time next week, another fantastic interview. Let me get my crap together here. I'm Captain Jim Palmer. I am the Dream Business Coach, and you take good care. <laughs>